Grumble, grumble. Hey everyone, it's the Grumpy Meeple, and I have COVID. Hey everyone, I also have a 40 pound shipping box that I believe is Osorn, or at least part of my Osorn. So, here I am, quarantined in my basement by myself. I am mostly feeling alive again, and so I decided I would bust this bad boy open if for no other reason than so I can start reading the lore book and get some content out there to you. So let's do it. This may be a little less chatty than my videos usually are because I am still very sick. I had to bust out the big guns in my recovery today. Bought the first season of Law & Order on Amazon Prime video. Law & Order being one of my all-time favorite shows. I'm famous for having routinely skipped class in college to watch it on TNT. It was on A&E at the time too, and so I would skip class to watch an episode and it would be rerun three times a day. It was at like noon, four o'clock and nine o'clock or something like that. So I would skip class at noon to watch an episode and then I would skip class at 4 p.m. sometimes to re-watch the same episode. <laughs> and then I would watch it again before I went to bed. For whatever reason, these days it's almost impossible to find, and I've resisted buying it because it's SD and it looks like shit. And you only have the first two seasons, but it's like comfort food for me, so I finally decided to pull the trigger and pick up the first season. And here we go! Wow! Oh my gosh! This is. Probably my most anticipated Kickstarter. I am so excited about this. Okay, so right off the bat, we start with the Armory. This is the set that comes with the alternate weapons that you can switch out on your push fit characters. To, so that you can literally equip every piece of weaponry that you pick up in the game, which I thought was one of the coolest things about the whole Kickstarter. And I really kind of couldn't be more excited about it. So let's take a look, since we've been waiting a very long time for this. Congratulations to Shadowborn Games finally being able to get this delivered and before they run the reprint too which is very smart because there's going to be a shit ton of videos just like this coming out showing off how awesome this stuff is okay the armory following pages can train instruction streets for quick swapping weapons on osworn character minis some push front components may become loosened to retighten simply press together Oh. oh, interesting. Look, all sorts of different bows. Okay, so it shows you all of the character models, which I don't want to spoil things necessarily. Exactly where they switch fit in and out, quick fit in and out, whatever. <laughs> and then we've got kind of a storage solution. Oh, and it's broken up by class. Bagged and broken up by class. That's really awesome. So here's the war bear. Let me just do this.
so here's the war bear and you can see here's an arm with the giant war hammer here he is with a two-handed war hammer and an axe these are so fucking cool holy shit Jamie Jolly, you absolute mad lad, as your folks will, would call it. I think, not really knowing much more about British culture than Lord of the Rings could tell me. This looks amazing. I'm so excited about this. I do know a little bit more than that about British culture, though, because I worked in the residence halls when I was in college and I was working at front desk one one winter and a bunch of uh, British exchange students showed up and I ended up becoming very good friends with them mostly because I was the only person in the dorms it was you know between um, Christmas break and the start of the semester so here we've got coins beautiful beautiful metal coins in different sizes, too, which I actually didn't know was coming. That's really nice. Man. These do, these feel like some premium ass coins. Ooh. Look at that. It's very, very nice. You got your 20s, your 10s, your 5s, and your 1s. And if I recall correctly, they're not coins so much as they are iron. The idea being that they are a currency, but more a currency, you know, they're not decorative. They're a currency in the sense that you need it to forge weapons. <sighs> All right. I'm not sure what this is. So I believe that there's a second box. Wrong about that, but I've seen pictures of people getting two shipping containers on Facebook. Ooh, the secret box. It says you may open this box. Hmm. Let's wait on this. Maybe we'll open that. Maybe we won't. Let's see what the other boxes say. If the other boxes are clearly available, do not open this box. And that is the one outlier. Then it might open. It could be that that's the secret standees. Because there were two versions of this game. There was a standee version and a normal version. So we'll set that aside over here. And we'll probably come back to that. Ooh, next up is the book. Being sick and stuck in my basement by myself. Quarantined with no family for five days. Which isn't as great as it might sound. At least not when you're so weak that you can barely get up to go to the bathroom. Um, but having recovered enough strength to move around... I am very interested in taking a look at this very beautiful, heavy, hardback book full of just absolutely deranged art. God. And, and lore and such. This is super cool. This is the way that I kind of want my board game collection to go from now on. I really have to resist just buying everything. I don't want to buy just everything. 
I want to buy the stuff that's so insanely ambitious and built out that that it's like a one of a kind thing. Spoiler warning: the maps in this pack contain major spoilers. If you wish to proceed with the mysteries of the game, do not open. Okay, so unfortunately, I cannot open this because I do not wish to spoil it. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> so, this box, which is roughly the size of most core boxes of other games, is actually nothing more than the 3D terrain. And it is heavy. Oh, mama. No wonder they have problems. Shipping this product it says right here, this product is not a toy. No shit. Wow. Holy crap. size of this stuff. It's fucking mind-boggling to me that this even got made. Again, there is very little question to me why they, at this point at least, how they might have struggled getting this one across the finishing line. Because they could have probably run a Kickstarter just for this 3D fantasy terrain. Plastic, incredible detail. Amazing. I am blown away by this. Holy shit. Two cottages. Below them, you've got pieces of trees, which I assume I would need. All stone walls. Yeah. Wow. Stunning, really. Good, you've got the trees. Let's see if we can't put one of the trees together. There's the bottom piece. piece they are you know clearly kind of jointed get them together wow that is a dope ass fantasy tree incredible <laughs> this is some of the best terrain I've ever seen, and it's not even the point of the campaign. This was like a $35 add-on. This is heavy. Heavy, heavy duty. Durable. 
thick, nigh indestructible plastic. And it all stores relatively easily too. Incredible. Uh, this game is already blowing my mind. The box is really durable too. I love that. This doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart on me. It also doesn't look like this is everything. It looks like the secret boxes are missing. Last thing in the package is the Osworn base game. Ugh. In my weakened state, I can barely even get this out of the package. So this is this is really where I want my collection to, to trend towards boutique. Stuff like this, stuff like Tenaris Adventures. You know, instead of buying 15 dungeon crawlers, I think I would like to start buying just one or two a year. But to have them have five years worth of content. <laughs> or just the most absurd production value of content that one has ever seen. God, this, this is quite possibly the heaviest Morgan box I've ever felt. That is, I don't know, Madara? It's tough. This is also much smaller than Madara. I feel like it's at least not nearly as long. It's just so heavy that it, it is legitimately difficult to move. One to four players, 14 plus, 45 minute story, 90 minutes for encounters. I did read that um, with if you're playing with the companions, so you have the option when you're playing of either running a bunch of characters or running two characters and then having two companions, which are like simplified AI versions of characters. And um, I was reading that people have found that they're able to play with their kids, that their kids can easily control the companions because there's so much less kind of maintenance than the real characters. So that, that excites me too. I would love to play this with my son. fantasy universe. Look at that part. Look at this. It's even working on freaking map over here. Box top pops right off. Box is pretty luxe. Right up front. Warning. The deep wood holds many mysteries and so does this box. Do not open any boxes, envelopes, or books, nor look at the faces of any cards or boards until told so. Components you look you may look at immediately are both rule books, punch boards, miniatures and trays, player aids, ability cards, architect cards, blah blah blah. To begin the search to begin, turn this page over. Oh, oh. oh my god, this is so gorgeous. This is something that virtually no one does. I look for it almost every time I buy one of these gigantic, epic-sized games, and almost nobody does it. And I wish they did, which is tell you how to organize all this shit to make it as easy as possible to play going forward. Wow. Wow, mystery all. 
big mystery envelopes. And a lot of them. This is interesting. What we've got here is instructions, but I'm not sure instructions from what, because I was assuming that the miniatures are pre, you must be able to, wow, this is a luxe, this is a super luxe detail too. You must be able to take these apart so that you can paint the pieces separately if you like. Push fit design. Multi-part push fit minis. If a part becomes loose, simply push the piece back into place and squeeze the front and back. Oh my god. Let's get into the miniatures here. I'm not inclined to wait any longer. Okay, so I can see push fit indeed because it looks like some of these at least are not. They're coming apart. Because they're not glued together. See, I didn't, for some reason this never occurred to me. I didn't realize this, that, that they were, to accommodate the push fit weapons and such, they had to build the whole miniature push fit. Which makes total sense, actually. Wow. Yeah, these are cool. These are very, very cool. As you can see, this guy basically completely fell apart, but that's okay because can just find him here. He's got a flail. There he is. And then what came off was his flail. So we get to actually try out the push fit right away. All right, so you're getting like a real preview of what this push fit technology is like. There we go. Let's see, where's this motherfucker's head? Okay, so there you go. That's a pretty cool, pretty cool miniature. And you know, I gotta look at the instructions. And... Make sure that I've pushed it, fitted everything in correctly, that feels better. Textured bases, really cool, awesome weapon. Don't see enough flails. Love the giant shield. It looks like it's just, it's just the heroes that are pushed through, which makes sense. Uh, I 
Let's see, I mean, this is the Ranger. I think that's one of the classes. I tried to keep up with this stuff as much as I could during the campaign, but to be honest, the level of detail that these guys went into was so obscene post campaign that it was really hard to keep up. Wow, so here you go. Boy, you want a you wanna test case for the push fit? This guy completely fell apart. Which is perfectly fine, because that's the whole point of the miniatures, apparently. <coughs> if you want to be able to do completely insane shit, like rebuild your miniature every time he gets a fucking piece of loot, then they need to have the flexibility to do this kind of stuff. And... No power to on my sewers. I'd much rather see somebody trying something new. Can't even fucking tell you how tired I am of the same old bullshit every single time. The same ballless bullshit. So one campaign looks exactly like another campaign, looks exactly like every other fucking campaign you've ever seen. Try new shit. These guys did it and they appear to have done it. Wow, this is an incredibly dynamic miniature, by the way. You're literally like jumping off of a rock. We're like, we're like 12, 13 years, 15 years maybe, in on this boutique board game Kickstarter experience stuff. And I think we've had enough of the same old fucking campaign with daily unlocks and this exact same kind of rigid, you know, plastic miniatures that are totally just delivered as is scope of these campaigns is so often pretty much the same, you know. And it's just so rare that somebody also that they that they bring out the entire experience essentially. This is a really cool miniature. Yeah, that's really cool. These are cool miniatures. I mean they're you know they're not they're not the, the greatest miniatures that have ever been made. I don't think they are, at least. Maybe they are. But boy, oh boy, do they get some points from me. First of all, you can see the use of this nice hips plastic has ensured straight weaponry. I mean, look at that. That is just such a bitch, and, and they're huge, too. Let me get this on the side for you. I happen to have one right here. You know, these are, this is Gozer, Gozerian. These are twice the size of those. This one, if I could take this, this goddamn Stay Puff Man on, no problem. <laughs> Beautiful. These are fucking awesome. I feel better already. No, I'm serious. I feel like shit. I'm, I'm very tired. <laughs> I love shields. I've always been obsessed with shields. Sword and shields. I like sword and boards. And big two-handers, too. Look at this. Fucking beast-looking priest with his massive war hammer. There he is, the war bear. This, this is like the coolest miniature in the set. God. Damn. I mean, he's huge even by these guys' comparison. You could chop the Marshmallow Man up and roast him, no problem. 
Oh, these are so cool. And the push fit, I mean, if you think about what that does in terms of the potential expandability of the game. So the next, and maybe that's why they had to do all the miniatures push fit. Because they're thinking to themselves, okay, so we did weapons. We go to the next game, we do armor. The, you know, the expansion. And we don't have to give you 16 new heroes. We give you the same heroes, we just give you all different miniatures because you just rebuild them. This is the rogue. Ultra dynamic. Like, holy shit. Jumping off that rock. How the fuck is that miniature even not all messed up? Here's the witch. Really cool looking. This has always been one of the cooler looking miniatures to me for whatever reason. forget what this thing is called. Oh my god. And then here's the hunter. Who has fallen to some extent. I was kind of hoping that it would tell you which Department to go back into because that seems really important. And you know, no messing around here, no trying to protect any anybody. As much as I admire Jamie Jolly and all them, I'm showing it to you raw. I'm taking this motherfucker apart right in front of you and. No experience. <coughs> so if these were garbage, they would probably be pretty embarrassed right now because it would look like garbage. But they're not. They're awesome. So awesome. I love all these. Equally. I don't even know which one of these I want to play with the most, to be honest. Right. So here we've got what I believe is that guy's. Maybe companions and such. Wow. That's a really cool eagle. I love the translucent blade. And a hawk. I love the translucent bases. Yeah, and these guys are solid. Solid plastic. It's like they're all unique, too. Or hired help, I can't recall. Very cool, no matter what. Lots of nice detail on there. Oops. There's this giant thing, I think, is a summon. Yeah, so I think that these are all actually like um, hero miniatures. Wow, this thing is freaking heavy. Go back to the. <laughs> About the same size, considerably heavier. And then you get a bunch of these in a couple of different poses, whatever the fuck these are. I think that these also are summons of like the, the druid or whatever. These are some very nice miniatures. So heavy. Here we 
we have the board. Double sided. Very cool. Tokens. This is um this is one of the only things I think that they didn't give you the option of bringing out on it, and I would love to see it is all the rest of the tokens too. And even the map, you know, you could do a, a neoprene. I think um, some of those things would be really good ideas if they want to generate interest from existing backers in the upcoming campaign. Some standees. Lots of Smoke storage. Oh, each chapter has its own time track. Lots of lots of dice. Holy shit, that's a lot of dice. This game has a really cool mechanic where you can choose whether you want to roll dice or draw cards. The idea being that the dice are kind of exploding, so you have more opportunity to get like those really big hits, whereas the cards are more predictable and a little less um, swingy, which is just a, a really, really cool idea. Here we've got, looks like, campaign books and such. Man, there's so much shit in this box. Free company trackers. <coughs> Bags for various things. The Osworn Journal. Really don't want to spoil anything there. Mysteries. Book contains many spoilers. Do not read. Do not flick through. Glued on that. The storybook. Chapters 12 through 21. Look at this, they even put like a kind of paper in there so that it can rub against itself. The Encounter Rule Book. The Encounter Book itself. The Story Rule Book. Oh, right, 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 because there's two parts. There's the story gameplay and then there's the encounter gameplay. I like that they broke it up like this. Because they very much marketed it as two distinct phases to the game. The story phase and the encounter phase. And it seems like they are sticking to that. Sounds like my kids are home. Wow. This is a heavy, heavy duty piece of Board. Set of board. On the back it says major spoilers, do not look at the faces of these boards. But obviously we are across this open to get to the characters. So this is, this is the encounters, 
Definitely do not want to spoil them. You've got your character boards. This is another thing. I don't even know if this would really come into play, but um, I would love dual layered boards. Um, I imagine, honestly, some of that stuff is is stuff that they that they could probably consider with the new campaign because they um, they know that they can <laughs> ship this thing now, and and I imagine that the new campaign is going to be exponentially more successful than the original one. Even still, these are beautiful, thick. <laughs> you know, in uh, Marvel United, you had to pay extra to get boards that are thick like this. These would be just thin pieces of paper if this were a Simon game. And on the back, it has a bunch of. Let's see. Oh, it gives you a difficulty rating on how to play them, and a bunch of lore about them. Oh, I, love that. I love it when the when the game tells you how difficult they are to play. The Grove Maiden, see, that's the one that summons all those creatures, and you can see difficulty five. Whereas the Exile, that's my boy right there. I love a barbarian. Fuck, just that picture just makes me want to play Diablo 3 again, to be honest. Yes, 3, not immortal. I don't know. I don't know if anything necessarily against immortal. I just can't play it on my Steam Deck or my Xbox. I do have a gaming PC, but I don't typically love playing. I love playing Diablo on it, but I feel like I would want to play Diablo Immortal on uh, a controller. And um, I don't love playing controller based games from my, on my PC, which is in my office. Maybe I should bring my PC downstairs. Oh, cool. Here's uh Bags to store your progress. Labeled, again, another blingy touch that they did not have to do, but that will make it much more fun, much easier to track your progress. This is, I don't know what the fuck this is. Some kind of token storage, obviously. Here's the cubes. I'm gonna go too deep into those. We've got gems, animus gems, I think they're called. And then just like the biggest pile of cards you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> I can't I, I can't even come close to getting into exactly what's going on here. But I will say there again you have the custom card storage. And this is nice. This is pretty this is pretty thick. It's cardboard, but it's pretty thick cardboard. Which is beautiful. You know, I've seen games do something similar to this. Uh, Sword and Sorcery did something similar. They had a little card holder display thing, but it's a little bit. There's there really is a difference between like micrometers of thickness on this stuff. This feels heavy and durable, like you could pass it around the table and stuff. Whereas some of the other attempts I've seen at similar. Things like in Sword and Sorcery, they're just a little, a little thinner, and and they don't feel as <coughs> they don't feel as durable. What the hell is this? This is, I don't want to spoil anything. It looks like a compass, so it must be part of the journey or something like that. All right, and then finally, since everything is pretty clearly labeled, I will go ahead and open this first secret box. I think this was some kind of addition.
Holy shit. Oh my god, what the fuck? That is awesome. Look at that. War bear fully painted. Heavy, thick. Wow. Shit, I hope that's showing up good on camera. That's fucking awesome. In a genuine surprise. I never spoiled that to myself. Oh, oh man. That's a hell of a free gift or whatever the hell it is. That is going on my mantle or <laughs> on top of one of my Ikea shelves in my basement. That's that's awesome. That's amazing. Fuck. It makes me wish that they offered painted miniatures too in this next campaign. Because that's a pretty dope ass paint job. That's incredible. So that's it. If you can call that enormous pile of stuff it <laughs> for a board game. Um, that is my unboxing of Oathsworn. I've got to get all this stuff back into some semblance of order and get the rule book out and get over this cold slash COVID so that I can get to showing you how the game plays. I'm really excited. I'm excited about this game in general. I really like the scope of it too. It's not too huge. 18 chapters feels doable. These things always feel doable to me and are never in any way do doable. <laughs> because I... I don't know. I just seem to not be able to stick with them forever and ever. Look at the size of that. Oh my god. That is such a great, totally random, has nothing to do with gameplay. Doesn't, it just like, uh, doesn't have any weight, doesn't add any weight, you know, like, it's just like, put this on your, put this on your shelf and have it look fucking awesome. That's great. Um, yeah, so what was I saying? I, I hope I can stick with this one and get some gameplay video shot in the very near future. So, hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to go now before I die on camera. Have a good rest of your day, and I will talk to you later.